Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Kind of stuck here at the VA dealing with my allergies, so I'm going to kick it off with a little bit of story time. Uh, the story is kind of a learning process for me because it was a dangerous situation with a, a breaking uh, episode I had. And I wanted to kind of share it with you guys, bring you up to date, hopefully help you learn something, and uh, we can all be safer for it. It was late spring, seven years ago. I had recently purchased my 1995 Volvo T5R. I got it home from Queens, New York. I got the timing belt changed. Uh, was tinkering with it, about to take a trip to Charlotte, North Carolina from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I noticed the brake pads were about gone. So I ran down to the local uh, O'Reilly's parts store, grabbed a set of pads that I planned to have only on the car temporarily, and installed them and took off on my way. I did not have an issue until I was actually on my way back. On my way back, going through the Memphis, Tennessee area, somewhere right before Memphis, I think, it was getting dark. I was coming down the fast lane, about the speed limit. Uh, there was most of the cars was in the slow lane. So, as I was passing by the vehicles in the slow lane, one of them came out into the fast lane. I had to hit my brakes kind of fast because he kind of darted out right in front of me. So I slowed down probably 10 miles an hour uh, kind of quick, had a, a good press on the brake. So there was a little bit of gap a second or two later in the other lane. So I switched lanes and made an attempt to pass that vehicle and get back in the front of him. Well, about that time, the vehicle a little bit further up started braking, which closed my gap. I didn't have enough time to make it. After hitting the gas, I had to hit the brakes again, probably 30, 40 seconds later, to get that car slowed down. And I slowed down, got back in the fast lane, and after that vehicle got by the other vehicle, I dropped back to the lane, I hit the gas, and lo and behold, the car in front of me changed lanes uh, into my lane, and I, I was on the gas, so I had to go for my brakes again. So this was three quick uh, sessions of heavy braking, not going down that far though, from 10 miles an hour slower, another 5 or 10 miles an hour slower. But this third time I hit my brakes, I felt the brake grab just for about a half a second and then they just totally let loose. I had total brake failure and the car in front of me was slowing down so I actually had to take the shoulder to avoid hitting that vehicle. With these vehicles getting in front of me like that frustrating me, man I'm just glad I didn't have a firearm. I was hot. So after the car slowed down in the shoulder I got back on the road and I went by the vehicle that uh, was in my way. Boy, if those could kill, they got ready to die. Anyway, they got out of my way and I just kind of pondered on what had happened. And I thought for years that it was those inexpensive pads that caused me to lose my braking from the pads heating up and just having brake fade. So over the years, another car later, which is my black wagon, I've always had the thought of upgrading my braking system to the bigger brakes, 302s. Not really serious about it, because after that, I never seemed to have any problem with it. But I've always been in the back of my mind. And when I seen a R in the salvage yard a few weeks ago, I decided to grab the parts off of it to upgrade my braking to the 302 big brake system that you recently seen me do on my vehicle. Now over the years and uh, doing my own brakes and stuff, normally when it's time to change my pads, I actually take the pads off, 
I bleed a little bit of the fluid out of the brake calipers because I do get a little air out of them and I just call it a day. I did notice in the owner's manual that it calls for brake fluid replacement every couple of years. I never really understood that so I'm guilty. I never ever did it. But in this uh, process of upgrading my brake system, I finally learned what that's all about. Doing my little helper tour, a guy in, in New York that had that black R that I worked on several times, he actually had a power brake bleeder that you hook up to the top of the brake reservoir, you put a little pressure on it, you open the bleeder screw, and it pushed the fluid all the way out until it came clear out of that uh, caliper. Really easy system to use. That got me to thinking I maybe should do a video on showing people how to exchange the fluid in the system and not just bleed a little air out and change a little bit of fluid. Well, when I decided to get my brakes done on my car, I went and got a vacuum pump that is similar to that power bleeder and vacuum out the old fluid and replace it with fresh fluid. And in doing so, uh, I actually picked up the wrong brake fluid. Somebody told me to get dot three. I didn't feel good about that. I double checked my owner's manual and it said dot four. So I googled what would happen if I used dot three instead of dot four. And basically the bottom line is the boiling point of the dot three is a lot lower than the boiling point on dot four. Your car manufacturer knows how uh, your braking system is in conjunction with the weight of the vehicle, stuff like that. So in my vehicle, they recommend dot four. I stumbled across a website called the Car Bible and they had a braking section with several things in the, in the braking system that they explained. One of the things that I wanted to know and stood out was the difference between DOT3 and DOT4 brake fluid. It's basically the same type of formula, but DOT3 is cheaper since it boils at a lower temperature than DOT4. That makes DOT4 more expensive. For example, DOT3 may be $5, DOT4 may be $8. So it's almost half price, but do you want to jeopardize the safety of your braking system uh, getting a cheaper fluid? The answer to that is no for everybody. What's another two or three bucks when it comes to making sure you get your vehicle stopped and not having an accident? As I said in that video, you actually uh, want to use the proper fluid. And the DOT4, when it's brand new, the boiling temperature is about 450 degrees. On DOT3, when it's brand new, the boiling temperature is about, uh, I don't know, 330, something like that. Now, as brake fluid is used, it is actually designed to absorb moisture in the system. So as things heat up and cool down in your braking system, it creates moisture and the fluid absorbs that moisture. And as your brake fluid is getting contaminated with this moisture, which is like water condensation, it actually... Uh, becomes at a saturation point of 10%. At 10%, they consider the fluid wet. So, your owner's manual and your manufacturer, they use the vehicle, they test it, and they figure out at what point is your contamination uh, 10% water content, which makes it wet. That's the point they want you to replace that fluid. Right here in the owner's manual, it says that I should use DOT4 or better type of brake fluid and it should be replaced every second year or 30,000 miles. And if I'm driving under extreme conditions, towing, mountainous driving, etc., it should be replaced every 15,000 miles or every one year. So in my vehicle, they say 30,000 miles, it becomes wet. They want you to change that fluid because instead of my fluid boiling at 450 degrees, it's now boiling around 320 degrees. Well, guess what? Every 30,000 miles, it's getting wetter and wetter and wetter, thus lowering 
the temperature at which that fluid will boil. So, here I go. Boil, 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 boil. What's that mean to you? Well, what it means to you is, whenever your brake gets hot enough to boil, that boiling process actually introduces air into your system. So, you change your brake pads, you bleed the caliper, there's a little air in there. Where'd that air come from? How'd that air get in there? Your reservoir never got low. Well, it got in there because at one point of time during your use of the vehicle, it uh, had a boiling episode, and that boiling episode introduced air into the system. So, air compresses, fluid doesn't. So, as you boil time and time again, you're getting more and more air into your system that needs to be bled off. And when you push on your brakes, if you feel a spongy feeling, it's probably enough air in the system that you're actually compressing this air before you're moving that fluid to put the pads onto the uh, rotors. So you're not really putting good pressure on the brake pads to rotors until you've compressed that air. That gives you the spongy pedal feel. So A, that's a condition that you don't want. You don't want spongy pedal feel. B, you don't want your temperature rating of your fluid to drop real low because when it does it generates the process of you being at a lower boiling point which makes you get more and more air into your system mainly into your calipers where you're having more and more spongy feel. Number three if your temperature boiling temperature is low and you're getting that boiling point that lowers the thermal operation of your brake system. So, let's say for instance, your brakes are nice and cool. Your fluid is eh, a little wet, maybe 20%. Your boiling point's 250 degrees. As you drive around town, do normal braking, normal driving, you may be breaking your system up between 150 and 200 degrees. Are you in any danger? Probably not. Your brakes are being used one whack at a time, you're okay, it's cooling off in between your braking episodes, you're fine. But you hit an episode like I did, where I used my brakes three times in rapid increments. Well, let's say I had 50% wetness in my fluid. My boiling point may have been all the way down there, 150. My first braking episode brought my temperature up to 150. My second braking episode brought my temperature up to 225 so now I'm boiling I go to hit it my third episode I got so much air and heat into the braking system that the brakes just let go the pads are hot the rotors are hot the uh, calipers are hot it takes a lot more force to put brake pressure on a boiling system versus a system that's not boiling so I lost my brakes. Over time and over the years, you may have uh, seen or heard of a police investigating an accident and there actually being no skid marks on the scene. A lot of people think, hey, this person didn't even try to stop. They didn't even try to brake. Well, there's a good chance that the fluid in their system was at such a low boiling point from never being replaced just bled out of the brake calipers doing normal brake pad changes that those brakes boiled so fast those people didn't have a chance they didn't have a chance to stop because their brake system heated up boiled so fast and they lost their braking the article on the car bible went so far as to suggest that those people that experienced these thermal brake failure situations with bad fluid and hot pads and rotors may no longer be with us because of the accident that they had from a result of having their brakes fail. Now in my situation, I actually thought it was my pads. So when I got back home, I ordered the ceramic pads that I like. I got those back on and I never really experienced that again. But there is a good chance that I never experienced it again because I didn't have that type of braking incident 
where I needed to use those breaks again and again and again in rapid succession. So a good example of heating up brakes may be that you're towing a vehicle or you're going downhill a long down the mountain type of journey. Some people I've heard lost their brakes. Is it because they had old brake fluid in the system? There's a good chance. So I want to say all of that to say this. You want to check your owner's manual and you want to see how often you should replace your brake fluid and do your best to perform that maintenance. Again, I am as guilty as it gets. I've never really done that until recently. So I want you to avoid possible accident and things like I have and get that brake fluid replaced and make sure you keep those stuff, uh, the air bled out of your calipers. I was so excited by the information I learned from reading that article that I actually gave a donation to the page because I appreciate getting that information and learning that information and having the opportunity to share it with you. If you got any questions, post it below. I'm not a brake specialist. I haven't been to any uh, professional training about brakes and fluids and stuff like that. But I have had my bad experience with losing my brakes, and I've also uh, read up on a little bit on it. So there you have it. Uh, change your fluid as recommended, and be safe. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.